let's use what we've learned about loops and variables to build a little uh, change making program. So let's say you, you're running a program for a vending machine and the problem is you're given an amount of money, let's say money, uh, and uh, you want to calculate what is the minimal number of coins required to get that amount of money that you're going to give back to the customer. So for example, if money is 25, then your program should print out quarter because 25 is one quarter. Just one line. So if it's 25, we'll say that's a quarter, your program prints out quarter. Uh, let's say if it's 27, it's going to print out quarter penny, penny, penny. And if it's uh, 15, it's going to print out dime and nickel. So you get the idea. Um, the idea is there's only quarters, pennies, nickels, and dimes. So how do you write that program? So we're going to have int money, and that's going to be the money. This could be any number. It's going to be an integer. And we have to solve the problem. So when trying to figure out how you're going to write the program, the first thing you should do is try to figure out how you would solve the problem. So if I give you, if I tell you, okay, give me 39 cents, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to think about it. And basically, you're going to start, well, 39, that's bigger than a quarter. So I'm going to give him a quarter. Right. So it's uh, 39. So I'm going to give him a quarter. So that's going to leave me with 39 minus 25, which is, uh, that's what, 1 and uh, 4. That's going to leave me with 14 cents I still have to give him. So with 14 cents, I'm going to give him a dime. And that's going to be 14 minus 10. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, 14 minus 10 is 4. So 4, well, that's just going to be penny, penny, penny. So basically what you're doing when you do this is you're taking the amount of money, you're saying, well, if the amount of money that I have to give him is more than a quarter, I'm going to give him a quarter. If it's not more than a quarter, like in this case it was 14, which is less than 25, I can't give him a quarter, so that's 25. So well, 14 is bigger than 10, so I'm going to give him a dime. And then I got 4, and 4 is not bigger than 10, not bigger than 5, so it's only bigger than 1, so I'm going to give it 1, 1, 1. So the program, the first program we're going to implement, I'm going to get rid of this, will be as follow. We're going to say while the amount of money that I have to give him is bigger than 0, I'm going to say if uh, the amount of money I have to give him is bigger than or equal to 25, then I'm going to give him a quarter. Uh, and also, I have to take away from the amount of money. Money minus equal 25. Okay, else if uh, the amount of money I have to give him is bigger than or equal to 10, then, well, I'm going to give him a dime. And I'm going to take away 10 cents from the pot. And similarly for nickel and penny. So it's bigger than 5. It's going to be a nickel. I'm going to take away 5. And if it's bigger than or equal to 1, then it's going to be a penny. And I take away 1. We notice the else if, right? So if money is, for example, 26, I'm going to go here, money is 26, I'm going to subtract 5, and then I'm not going to do this or this or this because those are the else's part. So I'm only going to do one of these. Each time through the while loop, I'm only going to do one of these four things. You, you see that? It says if, 
this is true, I'm gonna do this else if, this is true, I'll do this else if, this is true, I'll do this else if, this is true, do that. Uh, so let's run this. And you see for 39, it's a quarter diamond, four pennies. 25, 35, yeah, that's correct. Um, so that works. You can verify it, you should test this, you know. With five, that should just be a nickel. One should just be a penny. And 10 should just be a dime. And then 25 should be a quarter. Uh, 125 is five quarters. 25 should be one quarter. There you go. So that works. Um, so this is one way of doing this. Um, there is another way. There's many ways of doing this. So this is one thing about programming. Uh, you get to do things in many different ways. So another way you might think of this is, well, you might say, well, given a amount of money, like say, I don't know, 110, I might take the amount of money and divide it by 25, right? That's a quarter, and that that's the number of quarters I'm gonna give the person, right? So int uh, number of quarters is money divided by 25. Um, now, if money is say 20, you know, uh, let's test this out. If money is, if that division is not an integer, like in this case. Um, Java is just going to truncate it, right? So I'm going to run that, and you'll see that the first number is going to print out is four. So even though it's 110, 110 divided by 25 is not exactly four, because number of quarters is an integer, um, Java would simply truncates that and gets rid of the fractional part. It's like four point something, but it gets rid of the point stuff, and we're just left with a four. Which is cool because that's what we want. You know, it's four quarters. So now we don't want to print out uh, number four. We actually want to print out quarter, 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 as we did here. So let me uh, put this here so we have separate the first program from the second one when we when we run it. Okay. So what I want to do is print out num quarters. The word quarter, I want to print it out num quarters times. Like this is four, I want to print out four quarter quarter. So how do I do that? Well, that's where our friend the for loop comes in. So I'm gonna say for i is zero while i is less than num quarters. I plus plus. And then I'm gonna print out quarter. You get it? Uh, so that's gonna hopefully print out quarter, quarter, four times. Let's try to run that. And you see it printed quarter, quarter, four times, which was the right answer. Of course, it didn't print out the dimes, but you can see where we're going with this. To get the dimes and nickels, it's just the same thing. So I'm gonna copy that quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies. And we fix that number of quarters. So I can um, do find quarters replace with the dimes. And uh, so this the kind of stuff is useful to know, you know, you do this replace find, replace find, uh, close. Uh, so that's going to be a dime. And uh, the next one is nickels. Nickels, and that's going to be a nickel. And finally, it's going to be the penny. Pennies. Pennies penny and I notice that I also have to change to 25 right so for dimes I'm gonna divide by 10 for nickels I'm gonna divide by 5 and for pennies one um, is that gonna work yeah I don't think so 
So it's gonna print out a lot of pennies, right? Because what did we forget? Well, we forgot to reduce the money here. So money is money minus, oops, minus, I have to reduce the amount of money by num quarters times 25, right? And similarly here, I have to reduce the amount of money after I do that by uh, num dimes, dimes times 10. And finally here, I have to reduce the amount of money by number of nickels times five. Try that. And uh, so yeah, it worked. I uh, because I reduced the amount of money, and the other one is not printing anything. So let me just uh, put the money back in there for the second program. And run. So okay, we got quarter quarter dime, quarter 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 dime. So both of them are printing the same thing. And you know we have uh, well, it's one program, but you see this whole thing. Does the same thing as this whole thing here in two different ways, right? This one's using while loops and ifs. This one's using for loops and uh, some division. Um, so you can ask yourself, what's the better way of doing it, this way or this way? Well, uh, think about what if money, the amount of money, was a very very large number. Which one would be faster? Which one would take longer to run? Uh, so go ahead and try it.